Hi, my name is Megan Emery. I am the Chief Conservator and Senior Objects Conservator at the Midwest Art Conservation Center, otherwise known as MAC. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the field of art conservation, particularly as it pertains to the conservation of the New London Public Museum's Red Geranium Tea Room sign, which I recently had the pleasure of carrying out treatment. Let's begin by talking first about conservation versus restoration. Sometimes people wonder how these fields differ. According to the dictionary, conservation is the careful preservation and protection of something. Most of the time, people refer to this as natural resources, um, the environment, things like that. That's what people first think about. However, we always put the word art in there because art conservation is really what our field is about. But it is for the same thing. We're looking to prevent the further deterioration and neglect of works of art as a whole. Restoration is a field when you're actually acting to physically restore it to a prior condition or an improved condition. And the dictionary even gives the example of the restoration of a painting, for example. The field of art conservation is the profession devoted to the preservation of cultural property for the future. This includes conservation activities such as the examination and documentation of works of art, the physical treatment and preventive care, all of which is supported by research and education. Our professional field puts a high level of importance on understanding that we are looking at things from a broad perspective, not simply restoring a work of art, but using the science and knowledge of materials to really understand a work of art, how to best care for it, and how to use and select materials in the treatment that are going to cause the least long-term um, problems. For instance, we like our materials that we use to be reversible whenever possible. We want the aging properties of any adhesive or paint we use to um, be stable and long-lasting. We choose materials that are different different than the original materials used in order to have a clear understanding of the artist's original hand and any restoration or conservation work that has taken place. Conservators hold a master's degree in fine arts with a certificate of advanced study in, on, in art conservation. Prerequisites for um, the master's programs are a combination of art history, studio art, a minimum of four semesters of chemistry, and extensive number of hours working in a conservation lab to gain the experience and the understanding of what the field is all about. The Midwest Art Conservation Center, MAC, is a nonprofit regional lab located in Minneapolis, Minnesota. MAC works for museums, collecting institutions, and nonprofits all over the Midwest, including the New London Public Museum. In addition to doing treatments of works of art, MAC also offers preventive conservation services. On staff at MAC are three full-time paintings conservators, two full-time objects conservators, two paper conservators, and a contract textile conservator. In addition to the treatment conservators, we have two preventive conservators on staff as well. The preventive conservation department focuses on the bigger picture, not just the individual treatment of object. While all the conservators contribute to this work, it is an important to highlight that they focus on looking at light levels, temperature, humidity, pest management, um, looking for mold problems or biological attack, pollution, and simply training in the best use and handling of a collection. Let's focus now on treatment. When an object arrives at MAC, the first step is the examination and documentation. Before any treatment has begun, the object is thoroughly examined to identify all of the condition issues present, the materials of how it was made, and the best methods of moving forward with treatment. A detailed report outlining all of this is sent to the client before treatment. 
Some of the methods we use for this examination are simply visible examinations, sometimes with the aid of a microscope where we really look closely at it under different lighting conditions, microscopy, microchemical spot tests to identify different materials present, using ultraviolet illumination to identify visible fluorescence of materials on the surface, for instance, surface coatings or areas of old repair. X-radiography helps us identify structural concerns um, and again can identify areas of repair. And infrared can help us identify underdrawings or artist signatures um, and really just give us a better overall understanding of a work of art. After a client approves treatment, the first step is to carry out before treatment photography. Here you see the before treatment photography of the red geranium tea room sign. Before I begin to talk about the conservation of the sign, let's stop for a moment and talk a little bit about how the sign was made and its current and, and its condition before treatment. The sign is made out of galvanized steel sheet metal that was painted on either side, most likely with an oil-based house paint. There is a wood frame surrounding the metal sheet with that it was painted with black enamel-based paint. There are two sets of armature on either side, and those were used for display. It is unknown if this is the original armature used to hang the sign outside of the tea room, or if it was an addition by the New London Public Museum. Overall, the condition of the sign, considering it's a historic object that was actively used and not made to be saved for long term, is in good condition. M much of the uh, ornamentation remains intact, and it is still legible. However, over time, the, um, the movement of the thin metal sheet and the brittle paint has caused extensive flaking and areas of loss to that painted sign. The wood has also expanded and contracted at different rates from the paint, and there is extensive loss of paint and additional flaking on the black paint as well. The frame, the black frame, has been repainted at several times, and there are layers of paint that are visible. The color at one point may have been blue, green, or yellow. The black is the most prominent paint at this time. The sign has the similar iconography on either side. However, it was hand painted and therefore it varies slightly in composition of where the flower leaves are and the size of some of the lettering. There are very faint pencil lines seen underneath the letter and around the flower pot when looked at closely. Overall, considering it's a historic object that was never meant to be saved, and it was just meant to be outside just, you know, as an advertisement for the tea room, it's in very good condition. That flaking paint is the main concern at this time, along with lots of uh, accumulated dirt and grime. Here is an example of the flaking paint seen in normal illumination and in raking illumination. When we take photographs in raking illumination, we use a light source coming from one direction only, and it allows you to see some of the dimensionality of um, any condition issues or the work of art itself. In the flower pot on one side, you can see the extent of shadowing caused by the raised flakes of paint. The first step before any consolidation of the paint can occur is to clean the surface of as much loose dirt and grime as possible. If consolidated first, then the dirt would be consolidated right along the surface. So very delicately, the sign was cleaned. Here you can see an image of me surface cleaning the sign with soot sponge, which are vulcanized rubber sponges that are very porous and really soak up a lot of soot, soot, um, soot and uh, loose dirt and grime. This was done overall. In addition to using the soot sponges, small polyurethane sponges were used and a vacuum with a HEPA filter. The next step was to begin the consolidation of the paint. Here you can see a detail and all of those little yellow triangles are pieces of a post-it note cut so that I could identify trial areas of where I was consolidating with different methods, um, with different types of adhesive. This is what I do to test something. Uh, what I need to do is the paint was very hard and brittle and I needed to set it back down to the metal, which is not at all flexible. 
So I needed to test several different types of adhesive to find out which method worked the best with the least amount of staining, tide lining, and provided good adhesion for the paint. So these were just to indicate different test areas. After an appropriate adhesive was selected, the next step was to consolidate the paint overall. This was done by wicking warm adhesive with a small brush underneath each area of paint loss, taking care not to have excess adhesive on the surface where at all possible. The paint was then allowed to dry. The next day, a wet, damp blotter was placed on top of a sheet of Gore-Tex, that's the white rectangle you see, and it was the paint was lightly humidified just to soften it slightly so it would be more flexible for humidification. Silicone release mylar was used as a barrier and a tacking iron was used to reactivate the heat sensitive thermoplastic adhesive that had been used to consolidate the paint. This then allowed the slightly humidified paint flake to set down with heat and adhere to the stain uh, to the galvanized steel once again. This process was carried throughout. Here is an image that was just a snapshot taken before and after consolidation of one area. And you can see that the shadowing of those cupped flaking areas of paint has greatly diminished. After all of the consolidation and surface cleaning was done overall, photographs of the sign in its current condition were sent to the director of the New London Public Museum and consultation was held about the extent of compensation that should be carried out. When we talk about compensation on a historic object, we want to be careful because what we don't want to do is make it look brand new again. This is a historic object. It has been through a long life of being displayed outside, of being partially repainted, of being maintained. We don't want to change that history by completely making it look brand new now. So we want to maintain that age. However, at the same time, in addition to making sure the materials present are stable, we want it to look its best. So together, we selected a few visually distracting areas of paint loss where the paint loss was kind of dragged in your eye. You could catch it quickly. And those areas were selectively toned. On this side of the sign, we're highlighting two areas. One in the second O in room, where there's a large loss along the top edge, and also in the geraniums, where there is a large cluster of losses in the center top of the leaves. Here you can see them before and after treatment. So if I can highlight this area, you have this spot right here. Sorry, my drawing is not very clear. And this spot right here, which you can see were not completely filled in, but lessened in appearance to um, bring your eye to be less visually distracted. Of course, one of the delicate things about something like this is that once you start to do that, it makes you want to keep going. But we set our boundaries and just did a few areas on either side just to tie in the image and make it uh, more legible and less distracting. We did not want to fill in all the paint losses. On the other side, the two areas that we focused on were one loss in the E and in a large area of loss on the flower pot. You can see the before and after of those areas. Again, you can see how we just lessened here this just large loss. We just broke it up and made it a little less distracting. Here you can see the before and after photographs of one side. One thing that you'll notice in the after treatment is the fact that the frame was more addressed more thoroughly. One of the problems with the wooden frame is that it was so actively flaking and it would continue to do so. And those losses were even more distracting than anything on the sign. So it was decided that all losses on the frame would be toned back. This provides a nice, clean, crisp frame that allows the sign in the center to stand out. This is also considered more acceptable than in painting the sign because of the fact that the frame had been repainted so many times. It was visually distracting to see some of those different paint steps. 
Thank you for taking a little time to listen to the about the conservation of the Red Geranium Tea Room sign. I hope you found it interesting, learned a little bit, and understand why the conservation was so important to stabilize the paint, and yet visually the overall effect um, was not that dramatic. However, I can tell you that a significant amount of dirt and grime was removed from the sign, and the paint is stable at this point. Inherent to a sign like this, there will be times when the paint continues to flake. It's just not possible to catch all the little tiny areas. And with changes in the humidity and temp fluctuating temperatures, additional areas may become unstable. But being in a collection where it's in a stable environment and it's being well cared for will help prolong the life of the sign. Thank you again for taking time to learn about the Red Geranium Tea Room sign.